Hi, uh, my name is Jacob Moore. I'm the Associate Director at the Temple Hoeing Buell Center for the Study of American Architecture at um, GSAP. And uh, wanted to give you just a quick orientation here for Open House uh, to the, the Buell Center as we're known and a little bit of the work that we do. I wish we could show you the center in person. Um, but uh, the digital uh, realm gives us some opportunities we might not other ha otherwise have. So really quickly, so I'm the associate director. Uh, Reinhold Martin is the director uh, who you might encounter uh, in your other sort of tours for open house. Um, and Jordan Steingard is the program manager. Uh, so the three of us are, are uh, the sort of core of the center. And then I'll speak a little bit later, but we always have a team of students working at the center as well, graduate research assistants, um, who are really essential to the work that we, we do. And um, uh, yeah, I wanna explain a little bit about some of that. So I'm gonna share my screen and um, tour you around a little bit. So this is our main website. Um, that you can see buellcenter.columbia.edu uh, gives just a very zoomed back sense of some of the kinds of things we do. So we do different, we do conferences, we do um, uh, issue prizes, we uh, have publications, uh, et cetera. Um, but what I wanna focus on is that we do, the, the bulk of our work are long-term research projects um, that last you know, multiple years interact with the curriculum at, and various programs at the architecture school, but also we're kind of a bridge between the school and the rest of the university, between the university and the profession, um, sort of a lot of inside outside activity. Uh, I should say we're an independently endowed center, which means we sort of operate with a little bit of autonomy, um, which is important for uh, uh, the kinds of projects that we do that are entirely, you know, pegged to, um, let's say one semester or one program, um, but get to sort of move in and out. So uh, the project we've been working on for um, a few years now is this power here, uh, this project here you can see is called Power Infrastructure in America. And it has a dedicated website there, power.buellcenter.columbia.edu that I encourage you all to check out. Um, uh, that is about Broadly speaking, infrastructure, you can see here, uh, connecting infrastructure, politics, and life. Um, and we are, um, uh, there's a lot of moving parts to this project. I thought I would just show you um, a few. Uh, one is, um, you can see the sort of different formats here. Uh, so we do events. Um, so I thought of one recent event that we organized uh, was in, in Zoom land, we did a project, it's a workshop. Uh, under the umbrella of green reconstruction um, about how curricula of the built environment, professional schools of the built environment um, might need to change uh, in, under current circumstances. Um, so we brought together, you know, uh, over 30 um, uh, teachers and students, uh, but I mean, teachers were leading the workshop, but then um, students joined to talk about uh, the current curricular systems all from all across the country, these uh, professors joined um, to think about how things like climate, things like racial justice um, um, are taught, should be taught. There was some historical context, different themes you can see here uh, uh, were addressed. Um, uh, and this relates to sort of in pre-pandemic times, we would do events like this in person, we run conferences, et cetera. So um, uh, anyway, just to give you a sense of uh, uh, the kind of events that um, we've recently been doing, another one um, is this uh, event we pulled together um, last year. Uh, so a lot of what we do is um, in collaboration with other institutions, partners, um, uh, colleagues from inside and outside the university. Um, and this event uh, called the Green New Deal Public Assembly, we did at the Queens Museum here in New York. It's out in Queens um, last November, uh, obviously related to the theme of the Green New Deal, which uh, 
we have done quite a few projects uh, around. Um, and uh, this event brought together over 200 um, uh, artists, activists, community members, um, uh, elected officials. Uh, uh, so the Queens Museum is in Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's congressional district, and she was one of the co-authors of the Green New Deal. So uh, we had, she sent a video in, we had a representative from her office speaking about the Green New Deal. Um, anyway, the point of the event, you can see here some of the uh, material, was to talk about uh, what a Green New Deal could mean in the built environment, for the built environment, and how something like a Green New Deal might be collectively, democratically designed. Uh, so we had all sorts of people gathering to speak about that uh, under the rubric of public assembly, thinking carefully about uh, not just product, but process uh, for something like a Green New Deal. Um, so that was a, a, a big production for us last year that I think um, was really well received. We're really excited to keep that conversation going. Um, uh, not just with events, but also with um, uh, editorial projects or, you know, to, to keep the conversation around this uh, connected with students, with professionals um, uh, of, uh, you know, in different spheres. So I wanted to link that to um, some of the other parts of this power project, which is all these essays that we have uh, published. Um, and we're always bringing in new new ones. And so one of these related to the Green New Deal uh, was by the science fiction author that you might have heard of. And if you haven't, I definitely recommend his work, um, Kim Stanley Robinson. He wrote an essay uh, for the power site about the, um, the basically kind of reviewing the uh, uh, H.R. 109, the House resolution that laid out the sort of terms of the Green New Deal, uh, which if you're not familiar, is basically a sort of really broad rubric uh, put forward by certain members of Congress and the Senate uh, last year about the sort of scope and um, uh, way in which uh, climate change and climate justice um, ought to be addressed in the United States. And it's been subject to really intense debate um, and so uh, the Buell Center, among other things, through this power project, we're trying to sort of bring critical attention to that conversation from within the discipline and the profession and uh, to make sure that we're participating in that, in that very public and um, intense debate that will have a lot of, uh, already is having great impact on the, on the built environment. So this is one essay that I would encourage you to read uh, where, where this, uh, you know, author of science fiction is speaking about the Green New Deal. So thinking about these things in cultural terms is something that we also um, take very seriously at the Buell Center, thinking about architecture as a, as a contributor to, to culture, thinking about things from the perspective of humanities, not just from, let's say, the engineering side or the science side or the technical side, but from the, the side of history and theory and, um, and culture. Um, and so I also wanted to mention, so in the realm of essays and the sort of collaborative spirit of a lot of our work, we do um, uh, a lot of uh, editorial work with um, uh, other magazines, publications. And uh, one, we have a few different open collaborations running right now. One is a project with um, uh, a magazine two magazines in the South, one called Scalawag, the other one uh, called Southerly, Southeast United States. Um, the initiative is called Power Lines, but we're basically just uh, publishing essays together. We've been doing it for over the last year and a half. And this is the most recent uh, uh, essay published uh, as part of that series about international connections uh, um, uh, around energy and infrastructure and environment and justice and race. Um, and uh, Daniel Purfoy is the author, and she's a collaborated with us on a few other projects whose work I really encourage you to check out. Um, so anyway, I don't want to go into too much detail about the essay, but it's just another facet, let's say, of the project and the kinds of conversations that we try to support um, at the center. Um, and so the Power Lines Initiative, as I mentioned, is one of several sort of collaborative uh, uh, things we have going with... Um, uh, within the power project, let's say. Um, and 
I wanted to mention, a, you can see a few others here. This is a prize we're running with the Association of Collegiate Schools of um, Architecture. Uh, there's anyway, too many to name, um, but I wanted to maybe end with another one, an initiative here that is actually mostly internal to the center, part of the power project that we're calling the A&E system. Uh, Public Works and Private Interest in Architectural and Engineering Services 2000 to 2020. It should be coming out uh, by before the end of October. So by the time you're seeing this, it might even be out. We're going to release it as a PDF, but also uh, on Instagram. You can see the, the uh, handle here. Um, basically, the, it's a publication that's trying to think critically about um, how architecture is uh, uh, made today and, and where sort of power lies in our field and architecture broadly construed to include large infrastructure projects like the ones that are um, increasingly happening uh, uh, in response to, to climate change uh, um, and, and other sort of, uh, uh, of the, like the crises that we're facing are calling for large scale uh, responses. Uh, in the built environment, and um, and so this project is trying to situate um, how how our fields, allied fields of planning, architecture, engineering, are sort of positioned to respond, and where the uh, pedagogical uh, uh, agendas are and are not um, uh, thinking about some of those questions. So. Anyway, again, there's much more to say and it'll be out soon so you can see, but I wanted to come back here because uh, this is one of the parts of the project for which the involvement of the graduate research, research assistants at the center have, has been so key. And um, we are a tiny little center, but uh, uh, so we couldn't do so many of the things we do without the really intense um, and leading involvement of students from all across the program. So here's just some of the names that have been involved of students in the last like two and a half, three years who've been involved with uh, this particular project. Um, uh, and I, I can't credit them enough. I mean, really, it's, uh, it's been a, a wonderful to work with all of these students and just more generally to be involved in conversations with um, students from GSAP over the last, I've been at the center for seven years and it's um, uh, really, uh, a privilege to to um, develop these really co-develop these projects uh, with students um, who are coming from all over the place with different you know backgrounds and interests and priorities perspectives um, so to think about questions like some of the ones here at the top of this uh, page to really form those questions together and then begin to try and answer them together um, it's a it's a real like I said a privilege and it's exciting and it's a challenging time to be in our field, but um, uh, um, I think also an exciting one for some of the same reasons. So anyway, that's like a really brief uh, uh, tour of the Power Project uh, as a way of learning a little bit more about the Buell Center. Um, I'm gonna stop my, my share here, um, uh, but we, are, we do other things that are outside of the power project um, and are involved in the life of GSAP in all sorts of different ways. So I encourage you to send us an email, buellcenter at columbia.edu. My name is Jacob Morgan. You can write to me directly um, uh, or to Jordan or to Reinhold, but we are um, uh, um, really looking forward to the year that's to come and um, to continuing to sort of explore where all these things are gonna take us specifically, but also the school. It's a, it's a, uh, there's a lot uh, that's happening this year <laughs> in this country and around the world. And um, uh, the built environment plays a big part in that. So uh, anyway, we look forward to hopefully connecting with some of you um, individually, if, you're, if you uh, choose to come. And, um, and in the meantime, are happy to answer, answer any questions that you, that you have. So thanks for sticking it out if you've stuck it out this long. <laughs>